Hello everyone, welcome to another Let's Play. My name is Anna Mardal, and we're on chapter five of The Crown and the Flame with Kenna and Gabriel being held captive by mercenaries. They'll need to fight for their freedom. Meanwhile, Dominic sneaks into the Stormholt dungeon. Chapter five, the challenge. You stand in the center of a camp filled with mercenaries and former Stormholt soldiers. In front of you is Leon, the former captain of the guard of Stormholt, and Severin, the leader of the mercenaries. Everyone, take a good look. For the first time, we've got royalty in our camp. Too bad it's just till we turn her in for Prince Marco's reward. It's true. I'm Queen Kenna Reese of Stormholt, and I intend to take back the Five Kingdoms. The people in the crowd all start murmuring. You're the one people are talking about. The Lost Queen who's gathering an army. It's really her. The legend is true. I say we let them be on their way. We don't need to turn her over to Marco. Ha! We've got the queen here. And you're just gonna let her walk away? The bounty Prince Marco put on her head is 3,000 gold coins. The mercenaries cheer. We'll eat for months off of that. Ow! Sorry, Kenna, but money is money turn her over and Marco will have her head. So? Who's she to us? The mercenaries begin to jeer. There's another way. You could join me. All of you. We'll retake this land and restore our kingdom to glory. Glory? You mean your glory? You want to be some queen in a castle, sitting on a throne of pillows, while real men like me do the dirty work. A real leader fights his own fights. Everyone else is just a weakling waiting till someone stronger crushes them. Your mother learned that the hard way, didn't she? Severin, you'll bleed for that. You punch Severin squarely in the jaw. He takes a step back. She's fast. Severin glares at you, then laughs. Oh, so the little girl has a temper that almost tickled. My mother was a great woman. And now she's a dead one. That's how things go. We live in the real world out here. And in the real world, there's a mighty price on your pretty head. Severin, I can't let you hand her over. Don't be a fool. You can't seriously want to join her cause. I don't, but we can release her and Gabriel. There's no reason to have their blood on my, our hands. I can think of about 3,000 reasons. Who's with me? I am. The mercenaries cheer. Some of the former Stormholt soldiers join in, but others look conflicted. Besides, it's my call. The strong lead, the weak bleed. And I'm the strongest one here. Get over here, Queen Kenna. You're coming with me. Severin reaches for you, but Gabriel steps in. I challenge you, Severin. Huh? As you said, strength leads among your people. If you're the strongest one here, prove it. Fight me. What? In the kitchens, you find Rose baking bread for the night's dinner. Have you learned anything about our friend in the dungeon? Oh, Dominic, it's so sad. He's bleeding from a dozen wounds and can barely move his arm. They must have broken it. He needs real food to recover, but they only let me bring him scraps. They don't care if he recovers. You heard Marco in the courtyard. They mean to kill him. It's only a question of when. The guards told me I'd be bringing him food until the end of the week. 
Then we'll have to act before then. With any luck, I'll save our friend before he's tortured into giving up any information about Kenna. The princess. You were in love with her, weren't you? Me and Kenna? In love? I want them to have been friends. You know, like that kind of puppy feeling where you think it's love, but then you realize that, no, you just really cared about them a lot and still do. We were just friends. Really? We were close as children, but that's it. I just thought the way you care about her, she's the rightful queen. I want to see her back on the throne. As do I. How can I help? You've done enough. Leave the rest to me. Pardon me? We're in this together. It's one thing for me to risk my own life, but I don't want to see you in danger. Every day we live here, we're in danger. Last week, Marco had a servant flogged to death for spilling wine on his tunic. Fair enough. But Rose, you've always been cautious. I couldn't live with myself if you got into trouble because of me. Oh. Well. Rose blushes. Being near you makes me brave. Rose. I'd follow you anywhere, Dominic. So, what's your plan? If you're bringing the prisoner his food, then we can use that. Maybe today I can go with you? It's a plan, then. I like her so much. Like, a lot. You and Gabriel have been placed in Leon's tent and put under guard while the mercenaries gather for the duel. At least they had the decency to return my sword to me. Gabriel twirls his sword and practices a strike while you watch, frowning. It was a cunning move. If I wasn't entirely sure it would work. It worked on Severin because you challenged him publicly. Challenging Severin in front of his people meant he couldn't back down without looking weak. And he holds on to his power here because of his strength. The moment he looks weak, the other mercenaries would turn on him. Precisely. Gabriel practices a lunge. But Gabriel, I wish you weren't doing this. Funny, I thought I was supposed to be your bodyguard. Just because you've spent your life worrying about me doesn't mean I can't worry about you too. My queen, this duel is the only answer to our predicament. I'm just not sure this is a good idea. There's still enough fight in me to defend you. I know you would die to protect me, Gabriel. It's the dying part I'd rather avoid. You've been like a father. For as long as I can remember, you've always been there for me. And it was my pleasure, always. You've grown so quickly. Do you remember when you were just a girl? The ball your mother held in your honor when I found you in tears? Is this really the time to dredge up that embarrassing memory? You learned a valuable lesson that day. Or do you not remember? Boy, they really saw those scenes. Even a point can make a difference. <laughs> Fortunately, we've already bought this one. The ball when I was a little girl? I remember. I do. You close your eyes and remember the ball that happened years ago. Oh, look at little Kenna. Sniffle. Come now, little princess. It's time for you to be presented at court. I don't want to go. Can't we just stay and play? I would enjoy that very much. But a princess has a responsibility to her people. I know. Do you want me to go in your place as your bodyguard? It is my sworn duty to defend and protect you. I'll put on a tiny princess dress and a tiny princess crown. And no one 
would ever know the difference between me and the real Princess Kenna. Gabriel, that's silly. You don't even look like me. No? Then perhaps you'd better tell me why you don't want to go. And we'll see if we can figure out an answer. I'm afraid. Afraid? I've never known you to be afraid of anything. You're not afraid of the horses, or of getting hit with a practice sword. You didn't even make a squeak when you fell in the river last year. Those things are easy. I'm afraid of... I'm afraid of everyone laughing at me. And who would laugh at you? I heard Princess Lillian talking, and she said that everyone at court will think I'm a fool. She said my hair is always a miss, and my dress is always muddy, and I don't deserve to be a queen. Well, Princess Lillian's kingdom is half the size of yours. So maybe she says those things because she's jealous. But her hair is always perfectly braided, and her dresses are always not muddy. That's only because she isn't the same sort of princess as you are. Perhaps she's content with sitting in her throne room. Perhaps she's never seen sunrise over the stables, or collected tadpoles in the moat, or picked roses in the gardens. I don't have tadpoles anymore. I have frogs. So is there really any reason to be afraid of what she might say? No. And there's certainly no reason for you to be crying in a corner of the castle. No, I guess not. Then dry your eyes, my princess. I know courtly life can be scary, but you must face it the same way you face all your fears. Imagine you're calming a wild horse or falling into a river. How would you tell yourself to be brave? I'd just take a deep breath and count. Well now. All right. One, two, three. There. I suppose a ball isn't so scary as a river. You feel better? Yes. Now come with me. It's time to go enjoy the ball. Gabriel, I love you. And I love you too. Very much. Okay, now let's go. You've always been there for me, Gabriel. And I'll continue to do so. That I promise you. But just like the ball, you can't do everything for me. Some things I have to do myself. Please don't go through with this. There must be another way. I wish you were right, but these men will only respect a show of strength. The strong lead, the weak bleed. You're right, the strong lead. You, Rose, and Tristan are preparing a meal to bring down to the captive monk. I'll take the food down to him. Not alone you won't. I'll come with you. Me too. We'll all need something to carry. Lucky for you, I also bring the guard their dinner, so there's plenty to go around. Here, Tristan, take this pitcher of water. Dom, take these plates. Carrying the night's meal, the three of you head to the dungeon. About time we got our food, wench. Here you go, sir. May I fill your glass? As Rose talks to the guards, you and Tristan set down the plates and quietly slip into the shadows. And for dinner, I've made you the finest roasted quail. While the guards eat their food, you sneak down the stairs to find the monk's cell. You approach one of the cells in the back. Sir, are you in there? Y yes. The monk slowly pulls himself over to the bars. Here. Take this food. What news have you, my friend? Did my hawk reach you in time? You're the one who sent the warning. Then you did get it in time. Yes, the queen lives, or at least she was alive when I last saw her. She fled with her guard. Gabriel, so the old man is still kicking. He remains a dedicated protector to Kenna. 
I haven't seen Kenna in two years. Tell me, is she safe? She has grown into a fearsome warrior, that much I can say for certain. She is well equipped to protect herself. There's no time for this, Dom. You're right, we've got to get you out of here. My execution has been ordered for tomorrow. Prince Marco will have my head before sunset. Tomorrow? But I heard it would be at the end of the week. Apparently, my information is no longer needed. They've stopped questioning me. What? I believe this means Prince Marco has uncovered something about where Queen Kenna is now. I wish I knew more. This isn't good. We've got to figure out what Marco knows. First, we're breaking you out of here. I'm not letting you kill them kill you. Don't concern yourself with me. I've accepted my fate. Well, we haven't. We'll be back soon. Be prepared to flee. You lean forward to clasp the monk's hand, and he stares at the flame-shaped marking on your chest. That brand? I didn't know you were from the mountain tribes. If I am, no one bothered to tell me. Then you have no idea what the mark means. I should say something to do with fire? Some strange things have been happening to me. The monk stares into your eyes. Have you felt it? The fire? How did you... Just then, you hear the clanking sound of the gate opening. Bartel and Helene are coming. If they spot us, they'll recognize us and know we're up to something. Then we'll just have to make sure they don't see us. You hide in the cell next to the monks, pulling Tristan in with you. I don't see why we can't do it now. I bought my new set of pokers and everything. Prince Marco wants a public execution. You can't round up all the rabble in a couple of hours. Notices have been sent. You hear the sound of footsteps stop. Should we go now? Wait. They're not at the cell yet, or we would have heard them talking to the monk. Here he is. Indeed, there's our prisoner. Are you satisfied, Helene? You can't be too careful. I've never fully trusted the castle staff. I believe some of them may still be loyal to the Fool Queen. Yeah, I guess we could have killed them all if you want to make your own food and empty your own chamber pot. On your feet, prisoner. Tristan looks at you unsure. Now? No. You and Tristan sneak past the cell where Helene and Bartel are speaking to the monk. You should have saved yourself when you had the chance. Now Prince Marco has no need of you. I would never betray my queen. Insolent wretch. Bartel kicks him. The monk lets out a groan and you feel anger growing inside you. Up ahead, you see Rose waiting by the gate, gesturing quickly for you to come. Focus your power. You take a deep breath and focus the fire burning within you. Looking down at your hands, you see flames flickering across your fingers. You clench your fists and you feel the fire sinking deep into your veins. What is happening to me? You shake off the strange sensation and continue away from the cell. The sounds of Bartel beating the monk echo down the hall. Suddenly, Tristan nudges you sharply. Tristan places a finger over his lips and points behind you at a guard standing just a few feet from you. Oh god, I've got to find a way. Sneak past the guard. You step behind the guard, making as little noise as possible. You get past the guard successfully and motion for Tristan to follow your lead. Just as Tristan is about to step forward, the guard turns and spots Tristan standing right behind him. Who are you? What are you doing in the dungeons? I, uh, that is to say, uh, grab the sword. Before Tristan can get a word in edgewise, you snatch the guard's sword from its sheath. The guard immediately spins around. What in the? Stab him. With one quick thrust, you jam the guard's own sword through the eye socket in his helmet. The blade hits the metal at the back of the helmet with a thunk. The guard crumples to the floor, dead. You look up at Tristan, 
who is staring at you with eyes wide with fear. You... you killed him! Dominic, what have you done? Okay, first of all, I wasn't just gonna leave you, and second of all, you've helped me poison like hundreds of people now. What was I supposed to do? Stand there and watch him kill you first? You're... you're right. Let's just keep moving. You and Tristan drag the soldier's corpse into an alcove and flee the hallway. Rose stares at you for a moment, mouth agape. Tom! Let's go! The three of you flee up the stairs and rush back to your bedroom. I don't know if that was the right choice, but I'm not spending another key to be sure. I don't feel like Tristan is capable of handling things. Now playing is Kenna. You're pacing in Leon's tent while Gabriel sharpens his sword. Severin enters. Gabriel, we must talk man to man. Now. Gabriel whispers to you. More like man to beast. Killing you will be easy. You are so old and I am so big. So I'm here to offer a deal. You join us and work for me. And what happens to me? What do you think? We turn you over to the prince and live like kings. In case it wasn't clear before, I stand beside Kenna. Forget about the wench. Without her kingdom, she is nothing. She will be my queen until my death. A death that's happening tonight. If you won't save your skin, then I'll enjoy taking it. You're soft, old man. You don't remember what it's like to be in a real fight. We shall see about that. Gabriel rises to his feet, but Severin darts close to him, planting his foot behind Gabriel and knocking him down. The sword falls out of Gabriel's hand. Ugh. I should pull Gabriel's sword on Severin. You grab Gabriel's sword and point it at Severin. Back away from him. Severin laughs. Good instincts for a royal. Before you can react, he pulls a dagger out of his sleeve and throws it, cutting your hand and causing you to drop the sword. Don't point a sword at me, little girl. Not unless you're planning to stick it in me. And you're welcome for showing you a taste of what's to come. Maybe you'll take my offer now, old man. Never. I hope the little girl's ready to see your feet your head rolling by your feet. I'll make sure she gets a good view. That won't happen. And how will you stop it? By letting someone else die for you? You rulers are all the same. That's why my men and I bow to no one. Kenna pay him no mind. He can't possibly understand the weight of ruling a kingdom. No, Gabriel, he's right. I am? Yes, you are. I can't sit safely by while others fight for me. If I'm going to rule, it won't be because someone handed me a crown. I'll earn it. If I'm going to rule, it will be because I have earned my place on the throne through blood and steel. So you see, I won't be like other rulers because I can't be like other rulers. If I'm going to be the queen that people fight for, I must prove that I'm strong enough to deserve their loyalty. And that starts now. What are you saying? I will fight Severin myself. And that's the end of the chapter. You chose to reminisce about your childhood with Gabriel. And that was it. I don't know if you did the right thing in the dungeons with killing the guard instead of letting Tristan handle it. Maybe he could have talked his way out of it? But I don't think he could. I don't. So we're just going to keep going. Um, and that's Army Spur. 119 out of 19. So that was chapter 5. Um, things are so exciting right now, uh, obviously. Um, <laughs> in um, the next video, we get to duel Severin, who is not a good guy, but he's not as 
bad as he seems. I mean, he did try to save Gabriel's life. Which he didn't have to do. And I appreciate that. <laughs> he clearly wasn't thrilled at the idea of killing this old guy who didn't need to die. Um, so that's sweet. Um, so, okay, this has been The Crown and the Flame. And um, it's a book in the Choices app that is available on um, Android and iPhone. It is free to download and technically free to play, but all of those gold edge choices that we've been making for flashbacks and stuff, those cost money. So it's it's not actually free. I've I've plunked down some some heavy dosh to, to play it and and I did that because I, I really wanted the story, but then I thought, well, you know, I mean, the diamonds don't go away, the choices stay unlocked, so I'll make a let's play out of it, and then other people can see them too, so, and we all have fun together. Um, so I will see you in the next uh, video, which will be chapter six, and until then, um, I hope you're having good holidays. I will see you later. Bye-bye.